Hey everybody, Matthew Frey. Today I want to talk about the idea of knowing our relationship partner or spouse. And, and, and this concept of do we really know them? How well do we know them? Because I think this notion of like knowing someone versus how familiar they are to us or how comfortable they are to us are two distinct ideas and that they're pretty important in the context of relationship health. So a couple of videos ago, I went over this idea of safety and trust that is to me, like one of the most important foundational ideas to understand about a relationship is that when you exhaust trust, your relationship's gonna suck or it's gonna go away, one of the two, but they're both bad in theory if you want your relationship to last. And so I believe in this idea of preserving and or restoring, preventing erosion of trust sort of above virtually everything else in a relationship. I think trust is infinitely more important than love in the context of relationships that last. I think people end relationships with people they love all the time, but more often than not are ending relationships with people they can't trust. And again, we can talk about trust in the form of like lying and cheating and stealing and all these obvious things, but I believe very strongly that we erode trust in these really subtle, nuanced ways in our blind spots. And I encourage you to read things or watch other videos to explore how trust erodes in our blind spots. But today, I really wanna like focus in on this notion of knowing our relationship partner and spouse. And so I've got like these three sort of ideas here. And the first one is the ability to tell the story of your relationship. And what I imagine in my head when I talk about this is like two people going to see a therapist or a marriage counselor or even sitting in front of a friend and a couple and so one relationship partner relays the, hey, for this other person, for my relationship partner, this is what their life looks and feels like. This is the story of our marriage. This is what, it, what, it, what we experience day in and day out. Here are how the things I do or don't do roll downhill and impact them. This is their general level of happiness or sadness or anxiety. This is just everything, every idea about what the other person experiences in a relationship. I like to imagine two people going to talk to like a marriage counselor, telling the story of the relationship from the other person's perspective, and then having that relationship partner agree with them, saying, oh yeah, this person 100% understands exactly how I think and feel all the time based on the stuff that happens, and certainly based on the things he or she does that affect me, as you might be able to decipher. I don't think most people can do that. I think it's a laughable idea, but I think it's so important that you can do it. I think you don't get to trust somebody who can't report your like marital or, or shared domestic life experience with somebody else. If they can't do that accurately, if they can't do that in a way where you're like, hell yeah, they understand. They get it. They know me. They know exactly what things affect me positively and negatively. I can trust them. That condition doesn't exist most of the time. I'm encouraging you to think about that and to remedy it if it's sort of a blind spot in your relationship. And number two is, what the hell does that even say? Surprise. surprise. It's, uh, it's the idea of when I was in my, ma my marriage, I was frequently surprised by how my wife would react to certain things that I said or did or some sort of random example that maybe had nothing to do with me. I was surprised by, by just how she felt about things after knowing her for more than a decade. And, and I want to encourage you to consider what that suggests to a relationship partner, that the things I want, the things I need, the things I feel, the things that hurt me surprise this person. That's what she, you know, was forced to contend with, with me that I didn't get it, that I didn't see it coming. Can you truly trust the person to act in your best interest? when they're constantly surprised by the way you're impacted by the things going on around you. Decide for yourself. I posit that they cannot and that this is something we need to remedy, that we need to be able to eliminate surprises in our relationship. We need to be able to eliminate the idea of not being able to predict accurately how my relationship partner, how my spouse is going to think or feel about this thing that I'm doing or not doing. We have to be able to do that with some precision, with some level of accuracy in order to have safety and trust and this idea of reliability, sustainability, consistency within our shared home lives, which tends to be our most important relationship. 
And if that sucks, like the rest of our lives suck, which is why I just think these like nuanced ideas are so critical because there's this trickle down effect that just adversely touches like so many other aspects of our lives. And so that idea of, of, of avoiding surprise, of, of getting to know our partner on a nuanced level so that we can sort of predict accurately what does and does not affect them speaks directly to number three, the ability to sort of predict accurately, to anticipate the needs of our relationship partner as life's happening, right? It can't be this constant shit happens and then we discover and we're surprised that our relationship partner is adversely affected by this random thing that happened and then we show up for them. I mean, that's great, I guess. But does that, does that equal like the most amount of trust, the most amount of safety, the most amount of feeling loved and cared for in, in a relationship? I, I, I argue no. I really believe strongly we need to be able to anticipate as life's busy happening all around us and we're concentrating on keeping our kids safe and getting to work on time and paying bills and making dinner and, and, and making sure that we don't miss the big game or whatever it is that we're doing. We have to remain vigilant about seeing potential dangers, poten potential pain points, things that might suck for the other person. And it's so hard. <laughs> It's so hard if you have sort of like blind spots about this and you have a serial invalidation habit the way that I used to. When, when you don't respect how random life events, even ones that present really small like dishes by the sink, it, even when, when you don't understand truly, you just don't get it because you don't agree with it or you don't care, you don't know, whatever, how that affects, like authentically, truly, accurately affects them on the inside, our partner, when they walk into the room to find the dish or to find whatever thing that, that they sort of complain about or, or express disappointment in that we might think is stupid. If we can't do that, if we can't predict accurately, then I just suggest you're not gonna have as much trust as we need in order to have the most connected, most trust-filled, most healthy relationships possible. I just think that's really, really critical. And so, when people say, hey, I hurt because of this dish or insert whatever like ridiculous things going on in your personal life, instead of dismissing it, instead of judging it as silly and inconsequential and trying to argue that like your version of reality and your belief system and your feelings are superior to your relationship partners, dive in like a detective and figure out why for them this ridiculous thing, quote, like a dish is such a big deal. Figure it out. You don't have to agree. It's not about that. It's about being able to like put the puzzle pieces together moving forward in your personal life. If you understand why the dish is such an affront to like your relationship partner, why it feels like such a, a violation of, of respect or trust. And again, I, I know that sounds dramatic, but I think this is so critical. Then you can apply that identical notion to other quote unquote small things in your life. And it's a choice you don't have to make. I'm not saying like you're bad if you don't do this. I'm saying you will erode trust with your relationship partner if you don't do this. It has nothing to do with your character, has nothing to do with how relatively smart or dumb or good or bad you are, not one darn thing. It has everything to do with the math result of what happens next. If you can predict other people's needs in real time as life's happening around you, they can trust you. They can count on you. They can feel as if you're going to show up for them tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. And that is the formula for longevity of healthy relationships. So anyway, thanks. Um, I think it's really important. I hope you'll think about this idea of truly knowing your partner on a nuanced level. I know about things like NFL football and bourbon and poker and all this stuff that like my wife didn't give a shit about. And I understand why, but, but it must have been so offensive to her. The, the detail to which I would study poker and learn how to calculate pot odds and no third string running backs for football teams that I didn't follow just so I could try to win fantasy leagues. And the fact that I can name a proof point down to a, the tenth of a percent on most of the bottles I have in my basement bar is, is an idea that would have been offensive to her given that I couldn't predict how some random life event was going to impact her. So please please think about knowing your partner. And if you feel as if you're surprised or you're, you're missing critical pieces of information about why they think what they think or feel what they feel, please begin to do the work and, and restore some of that trust deficit that might exist between the two of you guys. And I just think that would be extraordinarily healing and powerful if it's something that you actively work on. And if your partner can trust you to consistently do that. 
Um, I think it will benefit your lives tremendously. And I hope you agree. Um, these are ideas that I talk about in depthly in my new book. This is how your marriage ends. It's a month old. I don't know if that's new or not. Um, it would be amazing if you check that out, if you were interested. Um, you can visit me at matthewfray.com. You can follow me on most of the social channels. And I, I certainly hope that you will. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys next time. See you.